Good evening. My name is Amar Jyot Singh, and I am a registered consultant uh, practicing immigration in Edmonton, where today is not too much cold. It's uh, barmy, eight or nine. Uh, and I was looking forward to meeting Andy Simulchuk for a long time, and today I've got hold of him. I know he's a busy lawyer, immigration lawyer, uh, has offices in uh, Canada and U.S., uh, and uh, uh, practicing U.S. immigration law and Canadian, Canadian immigration law. Uh, Andy was, uh, 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 Andy has, has a long uh, immigration practice, I think close to 40 years plus or 45 yes, yes. years, 40 if, I, years. if I remember. Yeah. Uh, one thing I can, I can tell you how long that has been since Andy has been practicing immigration law is when a Andy went to law school at UBC, I was born. I was born in 1967 <laughs> when Andy uh, enrolled into LL program in uh, UBC. It's one of the toughest, uh, I think, uh, still today, toughest program to get into uh, at, at the at, among all law programs. Uh, he has been lawyer. Uh, he has been practicing law since I think 82. Earlier, he was also working at United Nations correspondent from 75 to 77. Andy, just let me know if I'm going, you know, if that's a right, right. couple of corrections. One is uh, yeah, I'm, sure. I'm, uh, I've consolidated my law practices into Toronto. So I'm just, I have one office only. Oh, you just have one before office COVID, now. Just before COVID, I managed to consolidate. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, Andy Unbelievable. And Andy's entrepreneurial skills are evidenced by the fact that he was one of the first lawyers in the city of Edmonton uh, where, uh, you know, there's a big uh, mall, people who are not familiar with Edmonton, there's a big mall here West called West Edmonton Mall, you can check out on Google. Uh, he was one of the first lawyers to open his practice in West Edmonton Mall. Uh, I was it, the first. You, you, were, the first. you, were, you were the first. Uh, and he also uh, uh, was uh, instrumental in actually, I don't know whether he solely represented or he was, he, he uh, did a case for 300 Fiji uh, refugee cases long time, I think in the mid 80s or early 80s, yes, as I remember. Yes, and yes. Uh, he also was in the uh, Canadian Human Rights Tribunal, I think as a judge or yes. overseer. What, uh, for three like. years, for three for years I was, yes. So yeah. Andy, Andy has been a long, long, long time, uh, you know, veteran of immigration law uh, industry in North America. Uh, and uh, uh, and it's, my, it's my great fortune to have, uh, you know, met him. Uh, many people do not know, and I'm going to spill the beans today here, that when I came to Canada first time in 2007, in the, in the month of, I think, February, um, uh, I came in February, but I went back again, and then I came back, uh, it returned in April. Uh, one of the first jobs I got uh, within like about seven to ten days of my arrival in the city of Edmonton, where it was still snowing and still very cold, uh, believably in the middle of April. Uh, one of my first job was with Andy Simichuk, and uh, uh, he was the one who actually uh, mentored me in the, in, the, in the nuts and bolts of the Canadian immigration law practice, yeah. and I'm deeply obliged. So welcome, uh, with a little uh, bitey introduction, Andy, welcome to my show, and I hope uh, we have a lot, uh, lot of things to share and, and discuss heart to heart. I'm happy, more than happy to be with you here tonight. And... I am honored to be connected to you, Amar John. You've turned it into quite a, a, a force in the immigration field. So it's, it's a delight to see uh, how your career has blossomed in Canada. Um, well, well in the, from, you know, in, from in early our, beginnings. From early beginnings, yes. Yeah. Uh, I will, I will, I will uh, uh, open up, uh, you know, what happened and how, how these things, uh, you know, uh, unraveled. Uh, but you know, um, uh, in in 2007, when I came to Canada first, I was uh, doing a lot of cases for green card applications. I was doing refugee application, which is called political asylum. There, uh, 485, I-130, which is petition for you know uh, sponsoring like uh, family members and stuff. Uh, I was doing 569 applications. I was doing a refugee travel document, you know, naturalization and those kind of applications. So I was working with a lot of lawyers. But my knowledge about uh, about Canadian immigration at that time was, uh, to say the least, very nascent and very uh, incipient, like very, uh, very, very limited. And uh, uh, Andy is the Andy is the is is the force. Andy is the 
uh, you know, like a, a change of the universe, which which put me into track of of, uh, of you know uh, on the on the Canadian immigration pathway. And I've learned a lot from Andy. And in our language, in our language, I, if you can, um, um, you know, probably you'll not understand this in Punjabi and Indian languages. And people who are who are watching this and listening this uh, eventually, they will understand what I'm saying. Uh, you know, we 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 pay a lot of obeisance. We pay a reference to our teachers, which is yeah. Yeah. I, the word is called guru means somebody who teaches something. So uh, in we had a we have a tradition, and it used to be. I'm sure it's still now uh, that when a teacher teaches a student something, so we become indebted for for the lifelong learning that the that the teacher has imparted. So we always say, you know, thank you. Thank you, the Nevada. And you know, we 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 pretty much uh, we are we are grateful that the teacher, uh, the the connection between the teacher and a student is is like nothing less than providential. Which is, in a in Indian language, we use the word sanjog, means by yeah. by God's destiny. You know, two people connect to, connect each other, and then and the knowledge is transferred, and then and it goes goes from generation to generation. So it is not, uh, uh, you know, beyond any wonder that I got to meet you first mm -hmm. in 2007. Uh, I still remember I was cooped up in a in Milbos. You, you came to my house, I think, uh, once. Yes, I remember. And, yeah. Yes, and, and uh, my wife and I had one daughter at that time, uh, and they were wondering, you know, what will I do? What job and something, and I, and I, talk to newcomers now they're always struggling to find the first job and for the lack of Canadian experience stuff and uh, uh, nothing short of a miracle that I was uh, you know I thought you know I, I need to talk to some immigration lawyers I'm not going to work something else you know like a driving a cab imagine can I be driving a cab I was driving, <laughs> driving driving a truck or something and I said look uh, you know um, I'm, I, I got to meet to some immigration lawyers and I made a list of all the lawyers pretty much, you know, I think about eight or ten at the time, not many even in today, immigration lawyers. Uh, and uh, I think you were third or fourth on the list and I'm calling and sending resume and stuff. And, and lo and behold, I think I called you, I sent a resume, you called me back, the, the meeting takes place quite uh, uh, you know, on a short notice within a few days, I think. Yeah. And uh, I, I immediately knew that Hans just was Hans Bester and Finlay, you know, uh, people who are in, in Edmonton, they um, they will understand. On 137, I still remember the building. I still remember the 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 bus I used to take. I used to change two buses from yes, Melbourne yes. Town Centre, number eight, uh, to downtown and number 1511 to Castle Down and and get off at 137th Avenue and 127th Street, walk across the street light, go to the building, press the elevator, go out and get to work. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I think I, I spent close to uh, two years plus, I think two and a half years plus, yes. plus before yes. before you had to move out to Toronto. I, I'm, yes. I'm, I'm extremely great. The reason, the reason I have brought, uh, guys, look, uh, the reason I brought Andy today is because uh, and he taught me a lot of things, and I, I will come to what what he taught. But one of the things that he that he mentioned early in those early days when social media was not even strong or not even, you know, YouTube. I I I, I did not even know what YouTube is that time. I did not even know what YouTube is even till, I think, uh, 2011 or so. I, I I knew nothing about YouTube. If somebody said YouTube, I thought maybe they're talking about you know, doing a tube uh, uh, experiment <laughs> in, a, in a chemical lab or something. So uh, Andy was the one who I think, I, I, don't, I don't remember how you mentioned this or how you referenced this. You, you definitely instill a, a, a seed of, uh, you know, a, a experiment on say that you should start writing something or maybe a blog or, yes. or, or you know, some, something. And I was wondering, what should I write? What can I write? I mean, what do I know? And even though I was doing some applications like family sponsorship, you know, yeah. I I had no idea what could I even write about something, and who would want to read my stuff. But uh, nonetheless, that uh, experiment and that bandwagon has, uh, you know, you see, it's a mushroom into all the right now. So I I, I did uh, uh, put a YouTube channel in uh, in I think in um, 2011 or just about close to 2012 or so, yeah. and uh, every day like hundred subscribers close to 80 to 100 subscribers every day every day every day wow. And, wow. and today as today as we are talking this is uh this this has this is touching or it will soon uh, maybe this hour or so it will touch hundred thousand 
uh, subscribers. That's all unbelievable. Of, it That's is, incredible. It is, all, it is all because of you. It is all, it's oh. all because of you. It's all you because credit of you. me a lot. <laughs> I wish I, I was I half as good as the credits you're giving me. But let me say a word about you Please. from the start. Please. All right. So I remember uh, the early days of your coming. And um, uh, one thing that I was very struck by was your absolute dedication to immigration that uh, we're losing your picture here. Uh, no, it's, 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 continue talking. I'm, I'm showing okay. something on the screen. I'm showing a website. Okay. Yeah, sure. So the incredible uh, devotion that you have to the topic of immigration, like you live immigration. You would eat immigration breakfast, life, lunch and supper, I used to say. Um, such passionate devotion to immigration. Yeah. Um, it's it's uh, incredible, incredible. And that's why you've been successful, I think. And, uh, you know, to be successful in immigration, I think a real key thing is to have good character. If you're dishonest, if you cut corners, if you are sharp in your dealings with others, if, if it's all about the money and you're a shark, yeah. it, you're not going to go very far. People think, you know, what I want is a, you know, a real uh, sort of shark when it comes to a lawyer. But they don't realize if you're hiring a shark, that means he's going to be a shark or she's going to be a shark to you too as a Absolutely. client. Absolutely. So, yeah. I, I wanted to show I wanted to show uh, people who are watching this uh, you know something that you can see on the screen. Can you see my screen, Andy? Yes, yes, of course. This yeah. is this is your website, uh, guys. The, this is Andy Semichuk, by the way. Look at how young he is. Well, what what year is this? A Force Media. That's um, got to be about uh, maybe about <laughs> ten years ago. Ten years ago, and yeah. Andy and, and Andy has a uh, has a uh, you know he writes a lot of article, guys. Uh, all you have to do is uh, you can see on the screen Andy J Semochuk. Uh, some some people pronounce Semochuk. You know, yeah. I I think I, I go Semochuk. This is a Ukrainian uh, descent name. Correct. Right. Uh, just yeah. in case that people don't know do Andy Semochuk, so you can type on Google. You know, type the, all this in Google, and you will see. So he has a lot of articles, and last article was number 30s, and his article is he's a regular contributor on Forbes, uh, which is a as you know, internationally acclaimed uh, magazine, a lot of articles, how to become a U.S. citizen, how to get across the U.S. border, blah, 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 Farid Zakaria, uh, this case, uh, afraid of U.S. immigrants. There's a lot of articles, more articles. So there's something I wanted to show uh, what I, the first thing that I learned from Andy is this. Uh, can you see on the screen? In medicine, yeah. they say diagnosis is 50% of the cure. Do you, yeah. do you remember this? Uh, and, I, and I remember, and the reason I, I'm mentioning this because this is the mantra of my immigration practice. This is the secret of my. Uh, oh, look at this photo. Where, where are you in Africa? <laughs> Where's this at? This is in Colombia. Oh, uh, is it, okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm visiting Colombia in that, oh, that picture. It's, yeah. Wow. Uh, so, uh, fifty percent of the uh, of the solution to immigration problem. And when people come uh, to any immigration lawyer or any licensed consultant, they 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 pretty much are distressed and they are disturbed if they're refused or they're facing frustration. Uh, and most of my practice uh, is uh, refuse cases and appeal cases. And, and I can tell you this, uh, and I, I have no uh, you know, qualms in, in confessing that they went to somebody who, who may be a lawyer or illegal consultant or legal consultant or, or whatever, the diagnosis was wrong. Uh, so somebody said, OK, do this, fill up this application, apply for this, not knowing that they don't qualify or maybe like marriage, marriage application. They did not understand the bona fides of spousal application. They did not understand the, yeah. you know, the, the, the eligibility of, you know, whatever a federal skill trade class express into something when the diagnosis has been wrong. Uh, it is not surprising that the application will result in a calamity. Uh, it will be refused. Yeah. Ultimately, the client will be frustrated. Number one thing that Andy taught me was diagnosis is the key, and which is which yeah. you have listed on the website. This is the first thing I I learned from diagnosis, and as a result, most of my uh, the way of approaching any any application is that I I hold the client uh, 
on a, on a personal basis and saying, look, we are not doing any application. We are not doing this anything, but I want you to give at least one hour of your time. Let us find out what is the problem. Let us do an X-ray of your background. Let us find yeah. out what the problem is. Let us do a diagnosis, and that's how that's how we come up to the solution. A lot of yeah. people, as you as you as you know, the whole planet, you know, seven billion people, uh, pretty much, you know, ninety percent of all the people, they all want to come to Canada or U.S. They want to immigrate. Yeah. They all have aspirations, and uh, because of their gullibility, you know, it's uh, just a uh, they get uh, taken in for a ride by unscrupulous consultants and they do wrong applications. I have hundreds of examples where, you know, people have paid money to lawyers and consultants and paid a huge deposit and did like a Quebec uh, application or PNP or LMI or something and it yeah. went nowhere. And after a few years, they are still downtrodden. They are still crying. The money's gone. And when they come back to, to me and say, look, can you help me? And say, yes, I will help you. Let me diagnose the problem first. And, you know, people have some kind of psychology, uh, especially in the less developed world, saying, like, look, take this money, take 5,000, 10,000, and give me the visa as if I have a visa photocopy yeah. machine. I can hand over yeah. the visa like this. And I say, look, it doesn't work like this. Right. I have to spend time with you so that we can diagnose the problem. Maybe you do not qualify for Canada. Maybe you should yeah. go to New Zealand. Maybe you should go to America. Maybe you should go somewhere else. You don't need to to uh, to Canada because Canada is not the right immigration segment for you. So, you know, sometimes people are bewildered and say, how, how come you can say uh, no to me? You know, you are in the business to help me, no? I say, I'm not in the business to help you. I'm the business of telling you the truth. And this is what I learned from Andy. So number one, yeah. Andy, you taught me how to do a proper diagnosis of the problem, uh, starting with marriage cases, which was your favorite. Yeah. I know cross-border yeah. couple. Uh, most of my caseload today is marriage related whether it's a pr or it's a non-immigrant uh, visas yeah. like you know just like in your area where gta uh, you know there are close to i would say uh, at least 100000 students come every year Amazing. in gta area and different colleges you know bunch of colleges and universities there all of these people are sooner or later looking to get married and bring their spouses which is called yeah. uh, open spouse uh, visa uh, under uh, so the work Work permit. That's right. right. Work permit. Yeah. They get category. It's a LMI exempt work permit under category LMI exempt code called C42. Uh, that's yeah. what they get. And uh, and they all come to me because, you know, when they go to a local consultant in Brampton, Mississauga, Toronto, somewhere area, and these consult consultants are charging their money, maybe $1,000, $2,000, and let's do the application, whatever, not understanding the, the conjugal relationship is the key to the success yeah. of, of the visa. Yeah. And then they do the application just by having a little marriage certificate. I and mean, they come back to me and say, look, your application is missing the meat of the marriage. You know, you are not showing your your connection, your cohabitation and stuff. And yes. so it doesn't matter. So uh, the marriage, I first first thing I learned from you is the, is the diagnosis of the immigration problem. Second, I learned from you how to do marriage cases and spouse cases. And the third well, thing... Well, let me, let, let me, before you keep going, please. let me ask you a question. In those cases that you're talking about with the students and they're trying to bring in their spouse, very often uh, the visa officers overseas turn them down because they uh, they think that they're going to stay permanently. They're, they're not going to come just for a visit, but they're going to stay permanently. How do you deal with that question? Oh, man, that's a lovely question. I love to I love to give lectures on, on these topics. You know, here's here's the here's the key. Uh, yeah. You you may be surprised that the visa officers are actually looking to help these spouses come to Canada if they are legally vetted, if they have yeah. bona fide relationship, if they are established in, in their home country. Let me just give you some few examples and that will sure, exemplify sure. what that is. I have seen literally hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of these refusal letter, letters. And sometime if you come to Edmonton, I'll show you a plethora of, you know, like a 500 page uh, refusal yeah. catalog of different people how i can write a book on how to get refused for these visas because by looking <laughs> at this uh, here, here's the here's the here's the problem in people who are who are beginner consultants or people who are not averse with how to do this yeah. there are two there are two sections they use to refuse these visas one is called uh, regulation 205c2 uh, yeah. which is which is denoting that the marriage has been hastily done 
Yes. That means uh, let's let me just give an example. Let let us say a girl comes from a different country and she she has a IELTS score and a good uh, marks and something. She gets admission. As soon as she gets admission to a Canadian university college and she's looking to file an application for visa, the whole village or the whole town comes to know this girl is going places. She's going to Toronto. Yeah. And yeah. and she's attracting, you know, uh, marriage uh, proposal and stuff. And all of a sudden, lo and behold, they get married. As soon as the visa yeah. is granted, I mean, think yeah. of this. As soon as the visa is granted or just a, a week later or a week before, they get married. So yeah. now we, ha we have what is called a hasty marriage. And yeah. we have which is called zero cohabitation, maybe one week or you know, maybe right. even less sometimes. Right. Uh, we have no proof of relationship. There's no joint bank account, no joint right. Insurance, no, uh, no, you know, like a combination of financial affairs, or maybe no, not even sometimes even a honeymoon. And all of a sudden, so all of a sudden, the girl flies here, and she's now missing the husband. The husband is missing, and all of a sudden, you know, yeah. uh, within uh, within a month or two, they do the application, and immediately, the first instance is still our section two zero five bling zero and without yeah. without even a without even an interview, without even a full X-ray, within like few seconds, the application denied. So this is this is the one yeah. single reason, uh, lack of bona fide relationship, the application will be denied. Right. The, second, the second reason is, which is called our uh, regulation 200, 1B and 1A. Uh, in this, what they look at is, what are your ties to the co home country? That means, right. are, are you working? Do you have a business? Do you have an income that I can see? Uh, if you have income, can I see your salary slips? Maybe can I see your right. uh, job letter, perhaps? Or you know, right. can pay I see stuff. are you actually yeah. getting uh, based up? And can I see the proof of salary? Uh, how much has been your combined balances? You know, what funds are you looking to come here? When the right. marriage is hasty and when the marriage lacks uh, bona fide intentions, many people. These uh, husbands uh, typically are jobless, they're unemployed, they don't have money, you know, they may have contributed the money to the wife so that she can study and she can she can pull them over here. Uh, yeah. typically, typically their applications will be denied because of lack of ties. So I, I can take a cursory look at any application within within like 90 seconds. I know this is the problem. This is the problem. You need to go yeah. and improve this. We cannot and do it's this. It's all happen. diagnosis, right? It's all, it's all diagnosis. And the diagnosis yeah. takes about, uh, for me, I can do the diagnosis in five minutes, actually. Yeah. But sometimes people ask questions and they can drag on for, you know, uh -huh. maybe, maybe hours or two hours, you know. But, uh, but, that's but, I but still, I want to press you a little bit more Please. on this 200, on the, on the ties. Uh, okay, bank accounts, uh, some kind of income and so on. Uh, do they normally the clients you have do they have strong ties that, no, they, that you can no, show? No, not at all. They don't have strong ties. The reason why they're getting refused repeatedly because they have zero ties. Uh, they have uh, no job. They have no job, or the job does not pay well, or this is a temporary right. job. They have literally no education. They are doing some scantily jobs, maybe you know, some driving or whatever, you know, agriculture or whatever, just subsistence yeah. uh, economy jobs. They don't have enough ties. On on the other hand, let me just give you a contrasting view of, uh, yeah. let us say a girl is in, in Canada, she is studying at a university here, and the spouse and the husband is in India. She, this guy is an IT engineer. He's, he's working right. in a big multinational. He has a BTEC in computer science. He's working for five years, six years. You know, he has uh, reasonable wages according to the country, maybe at least like $2,000 a month or so. Right. No problem, no problem. They'll get the visa like within click, click, click. There's oh, no problem. See, there you have it. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. You're showing. But, yeah. Yes, but those people will never come to me. People who are people who are such established and people right. who have done their homework, people who have done their research, they will never come to me because they can pretty much manage things on their own. The, right. the bulk of the people who come to me uh, are people who have no awareness of the regulation. They have yeah. no... They have no sensitivity about, you know, what is the right document to place, how to yeah. approach this and something. And they are going to consultants who are there to make a quick buck and they yeah. will do the application, hastily application, and they will come. I have so many cases. In fact, my caseload is full of people who have been refused two times, three times, four times, five times. Just last I, week, I you showed I, me one. Yes, yeah, was, yes. Uh, very... and, I, and I have and I have hundreds. I have hundreds of them. Uh, Unbelievable. People, People who are people who are refused four times, five times, they they start getting depressed. They are they yeah. are you know 
they are they are they are going to psychologists they are going to doctors they, they don't know what to do and you know they they don't understand and they are still uh, going to some consultants and, and even lawyers i i would say yeah. some lawyers uh, i i have to admit all lawyers are not expert in immigration and yeah. sometimes you go to a wrong lawyers and lawyers don't because a lawyer who does not have experience in doing hundreds of applications will not appreciate the nuances of what is involved in it yeah, and uh, cool. they get they get depressed and then then they eventually find me and then they come to me and then and then that's how it is yeah. it's all is all is all because of you and this uh, this is a life uh -huh. event because yeah. these uh, these visas are, uh, are many people who are watching this uh, conversation. Let, let me share you. Let, let me share one little thing on that topic right there. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. I love that. I'm going to tell you a little story, and the story is this. You may have heard this. A man's walking down the street, and he sees some bricklayers building a wall. And he goes to the first brick bricklayer. He says, "What are you doing?" And the bricklayer says, "Oh, I'm making ten dollars an hour." He goes to the second bricklayer. He says, what are you doing? And the bricklayer says, I'm building a wall. He goes to the third bricklayer. He says, what are you doing? He says, oh, I'm building a cathedral. I want this story, yes. Yeah. It's a matter of attitude. Yes. And in law, like the law you and I are practicing in immigration, we're building cathedrals, meaning, like you just mentioned, we're changing lives for the better forever yeah like these people when you step in and after three four five and you showed me a video today of someone who is rejected seven times that's right and that's you right. were able to turn it around for her yeah yeah you changed their lives for the better forever not only their lives but their children's lives and their descendants forever in canada can I can I quickly can I quickly add in this case? Yeah, uh, you mentioned the children. In fact, in this case, if I want to share you some immigration uh, tidbits here, this case, uh, the girl was studying in Calgary. I don't want to for privacy. I don't want to name the colleges. But she was studying in Calgary, uh, and she was already uh, you know history, marriage, and other things. So those things are all were already uh, a done deal in the case. But right. she she also was now when when they when they came to me when the family came to me drove all the way from Calgary to Edmonton to see me because they were referred by somebody else who went through a similar uh, application. Right. She was already pregnant, yeah. and the husband and the husband has been refused now already by four times. The husband has been refused four times. Uh -huh. She's already pregnant. She does not know if the husband can come in or not. She she was graduating from the college. Now she was looking to get the postgraduate work permit and then complete yeah. uh, work experience. She was pregnant. She cannot work now. And then all the hopes of actually getting the Canadian experience to eventually qualify for Alberta nominee program or express into something that would have taken another two to three years. And now she's wow. pregnant. The husband has been refused uh, many times. There's no hope that nobody can help him. Uh, and then all of a sudden we are talking. I'm talking yeah. to the, I'm talking to the girls' uh, family. They're talking to me. I look at them. When I'm looking at them, the the reason I and I'll, I'll share some secrets about it. The reason I take some case, I'm, and I can take as many cases every day as possible. Yeah. Uh, the reason I take any case to do it myself, and I don't have a staff. I'm not ashamed. I don't keep a staff. Any yeah. case that I do, I do it myself. If I if I see a sense of resignation in their eyes if i if i know that that's the end of the end of the world then yeah. i will definitely want I'll, I'll step in and say look let me handle this now yeah and in this case what really happened was after being refused four times i applied this was last uh, last year in november of 2019 i applied yeah. i got rejected from my side my application got rejected of course one time that's fine then then I did a, did a second application that also got rejected and then COVID came in in March. Uh, so that application got rejected. The, the family members said, look, we have a baby now. What do we do? We need the father. You know, she's alone yeah. or something. And I said, look, the, the husband is not going to get the uh, visitor visa at all. I don't think they will get the visitor visa. They got the recommendation from member of parliament and a gosh, you know, all over the workplace and everything. Wow. God's got a whole list of referrals and recommendations. Nothing happened. Then uh, the last application which I filed, uh, that was early around uh, around the start of COVID, that got 
approved uh, just uh, you know just about two weeks ago. Yeah. So after a gap of of the, the COVID passing the COVID and then in, you know that's how it is. And uh, when I talk to the clients and uh, you know I I don't care how much money I charge. Typically I charge you know X dollar or something. And I always tell them look. Uh, you know, what is the value of bringing your husband here? Does, is yeah. it X dollars or two X dollars or three X dollars? When your husband will see you at Calgary Airport, tell me that emotion. What is the value and cost of that emotion? So yeah. you are right about this. This this business changes lives. It changes the direction. Yeah, it sure does. Look at, look at the baby who will see the father for the first time. Look yeah. at the wife and, and the husband who will set up their own household. Eventually, yeah. they will become... PR and you know the husband will do a job and something it will it will start a new trajectory in their lives all because yeah. of you all because of you <laughs> but I'll just say this not everybody has that attitude that you have you see you and I work for that purpose yeah. but other people who work in immigration sometimes work for ten dollars an hour or yeah. work because they're building a wall instead of changing lives and it's a it's an attitude thing. It's an attitude. I also I, I might mention just uh, in passing. I had a recent case of an individual who had come to Canada and he left a family behind overseas with children. Uh, it was a breakup. It was a nasty, ugly breakup. And he came to Canada with nothing, and he started out here, yeah. and he met a girl here, and she had some children. And they got together and they had some more children. Yeah. And he was, and then the question is, what does this guy do? And he's illegally here. He's an overstay. What do you do with this guy? You, you know, you send him back or, you know, how's he going to stay? Yeah. And now he's got his own children here and a whole family here. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it was a very ugly case. And I had the same experience, resignation. Yeah. Yeah. The sense of despair. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to take every case where there's resignation because some cases don't merit it, even yeah, if they're yeah. maybe they merit the resignation. I don't know. Yeah. But in this case, I thought, well, you know, and I'm not alone. I, I unlike you, I have an office full of people working with me. Yeah. Uh, so I have an advantage over you in that respect because yeah. yeah. I've got, you know, people helping me with how, yeah. how to do it best. And so on. But we applied and the, and the guy, despite all those handicaps of a family back home and yeah. uh, you know ugly he got he got accepted i was i was very happy for him yeah yeah uh, you know you you it's they say uh let uh well, what's the word um uh let the value of what you're doing be its own reward Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Because somebody who enjoys doing that profession, I don't need to charge money to get rewarded. I can see the see my reward in the on the expression and the in the in the enjoyment and contentment that they derive by you know talking. And sometimes when I talk to people and I tell them the reality, whether they qualify or not, I think and they thank me and this is my best reward. Of course, I have to pay my mark and stuff. That's a little separate issue, but I have to charge some money for the for doing this. But Whatever knowledge and whatever uh, uh, enlightenment they get from the discussion, I think that itself is rewarding. And I, by the way, uh, just between you and me, I, I always uh, I always tell people because I charge them money for consultation. I always tell people, look, if you are not really happy, if you are not really satisfied with my information, I'm not going to guarantee that you'll get the visa. But if you are really not happy at all that whatever I told you it doesn't gel with you, I will re I will refund your money in in about. Uh, this is my, uh, I, I got licensed in 2012. It's been uh, eight years now. In my eight years of practice, uh, I haven't had even a single person who said, look, I'm not satisfied, you know, I want my money back. Never at all. So that, that tells me I'm doing something right. That tells me I can sleep easy at night. My conscience yeah. is light. I, I'm not taking somebody's money unwarranted or illegally. You know, they're signing a consent and, you know, uh, I, I don't think any lawyer, I, I, I've never seen any lawyer, any consultant, anywhere in the world, forget about Canada or forget about anywhere, yeah. who, will, who will happily and readily say, look, let me just refund your money because, hey, you don't seem uh, to be very happy. You don't seem to be very happy yeah. about it. 
and but I I will I will routinely do that. It's all so all, I just, the, re, the reason I'm bringing this to, uh, to you is because I wanted to lighten my load on my what I was emotions about this profession and you, because yeah. it was uh, nothing short of miracle that I I got to meet you. And uh, I, I cannot imagine that if I met somebody else or some other lawyer or something else, maybe I did not meet any lawyer in 2007. Who knows? I would have been doing something else. Uh, and well, so it is not, you know, not the, the, the uh, they say, what is it? The test is in the pudding or whatever. You know? uh, in my case, uh, from my point of view, uh, one, one great benefit that you brought to me was I was traveling back and forth from Edmonton I, I, to Los Angeles. I know a lot because I had an office in Los Angeles. When I was away, I needed help back home. I needed someone who could, you know, uh, to talk to people intelligently and and deal with. Uh, and you were that person, which was a great benefit to me. You know, and yes. uh, your experience in the United States was an added bonus because. My cases were not just Canadian. There were also uh, American cases. So you were conversant. Yeah. You know, you yeah. picked up Canada very quickly. Within a matter of weeks, you were, yeah. you know, uh, flying. And uh, and you also knew the American side. So you were a great be benefit to me. But one of the disadvantages of, uh, and of course, there were huge advantages. One of the one of the misimpressions that people got when you were away, by the way, to LA for three weeks uh, uh, in, yeah. at, at a stretch. Uh, when I was sitting at, in your office and people, uh, I don't know, know, maybe maybe they thought uh, I'm the lawyer in charge or something, who knows, or whatever, even though I clarified, look, I'm just representing it. I'm just going to take a, like an intake, uh, yeah. you know, and, and, and just go to forward this information. But I think many people got this idea that maybe I'm the one, uh, I'm the decision maker uh, to do this application. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, things didn't, uh, maybe the whole uh, political atmosphere. Of well, you know, uh, oh, that's, we were that's in okay. touch. We were close in touch every day. Uh, yes. If they did get that impression, I don't that, think uh, we ever uh, purposefully misled people to, right. you know, I think you were pretty upfront and, um, and uh, we certainly corrected it by yeah. the time we filed something or did something on their behalf. So, uh, and then of course you became a, a, a consultant, a registered consultant. Uh, so now you have every right to represent equally with me, every right in the immigration to represent. That's people. right. That's right. Yeah, so now, now, last, now, last, if not the least, uh, I also remember Andy, and I want you to tell me that story. I, I used to tell me a story that I, I listened to with imagination. I think there was a lawyer in New York or somewhere that used to travel from one city to another. He would do a seminar, and then yeah. he would do uh, like a consultation by charging money. Tell me that story again. I want you to hear this to, uh, to uh, you know, hear the story again, so that other sure, people can. Sure. I'm just trying to remember his name. Uh, it's quite a while ago, but <laughs> this is when I was coming into the profession. Yes. And I was studying for the New York uh, bar. And uh, I, I noted there was a guy who was practicing immigration law. Uh, his office was not far from Penn Station in downtown Manhattan in New York. And uh, I, as a young man, thought I'll go to see him and uh, seek advice from him about how he's practicing law. And uh, so I made an appointment and uh, on the phone, I phoned them. Uh, 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 this is Andy Semichuk. <laughs> you know, can I come and see you today? I'll talk about sure, come on in, you know, uh, come Tuesday at two o'clock, be here and sharp. And mm. so I show up and he had a, a room full of clients, like uh, a reception room full of clients. And, and I show up at two o'clock. I, I go up to the receptionist. I say, I'm Andy Semich. I'm Andy Semich. I'm a, I'm a student. And she says, yes, yes, sit down. And she called him and he said, well, bring him right in. He came out of the office and invited me <laughs> into his inner chamber. Yeah. And, and he sat me down and I said, you know, like I'm, I'm interested in immigration and wondering if that's the right job for me. And that's he, the right job and, for you? And he talked to me about, about his work. Now, I happened to notice him because he used to travel. And uh, because I was traveling back and forth from Toronto to New York, I saw his ads in newspapers in Toronto. And it was U.S. immigration attorney uh, uh, looking to meet clients here in Toronto on such and such a date at such and such a hotel. And people would 
call and make appointments to see him. And, and he would hold private consultations with people. Back then, there was no internet. There was a phone, but it wasn't the same as seeing someone yeah. in person. Yeah. And there was no Skype. There was no, you know, uh, Zoom yeah. or anything. So, so people... Now, these ads were half-page ads, like in the Globe and Mail. And, and wow. They must have cost a fortune. Yeah. But he obviously uh, made uh, enough money to make it worthwhile. And he traveled in that way across not only to Toronto, but to other cities and, and met people and, and uh, gathered files for his office in, Toronto, in New York, where, where I was sitting with him. And, uh, and uh, he said, you know, he looked at me. He had written some immigration books and he pulled them off the shelf and he said, here, you read my books. He gave me a, a bunch of books. And and he took me out, uh, you know, we're sitting there talking and then he interrupted me. He says, come outside for a minute. He opened the door, look out uh, into the reception. I uh, looked out and there's about like 50 people there waiting and I'm, uh, you know, he's entertaining me while 50 clients are waiting. And he closes the door and he sits me down. You see, those clients are all waiting to, to talk to me. And I'm going to be dealing with their immigration cases, you know. And the, the basic gist of it was that, you know, uh, uh, he would serve their best interests, was the point that he was making with me. That they're there, they're waiting because they've heard that he he's doing well in, in immigration. And he told me this. He said, as you as you rise in the world of immigration, as you you know become more prominent and uh, and people learn about you, there will be those who snipe at you, you know, competitors who will uh, you know take shots at you at your reputation and at your work. It's part of it's just part of life. There's just no way, you know. Yeah. But it will be a signal to you that you're that you're doing your work properly, yeah. you know. Uh, of course, they they shouldn't be right about what they're sniping about, but yeah. but it will be a signal to you that you know that if people are sniping at you, it seem, seems that you're you know you're yeah. if you're doing everything right, you're climbing and and people are noticing that you know. There, there's, yeah. a phrase, there's a phrase uh, uh, to signify what you just said. Uh, it's it's like uh, nobody ever kicks a dead dog. Uh, yes. So, uh, if the dog is dead, I mean, there's no need to no need to criticize. I mean, he's already dead. So if the dog yeah. is alive in energy, he's barking something. People start to kill kick them. So if people are sniping at you, I mean, you know that uh, it uh, you're doing something right, and, and they don't like it. Maybe they're jealous or something. Who cares? We don't have time for that. So, yeah. but but this guy was charging a consultation fee to these clients. I think for talking. Yes. Right. yes. And this is and this is what this is the third thing that I learned from Andy. And I know in. Yeah. Uh, in Edmonton, also when you were, um, uh, you know, when you were uh, discussing the cases with uh, with these clients, and uh, you know, on the reception, people would pay a certain fee and come to you, and then they would talk. I was dazed, uh, to say the least, and because in 2007, um, you know, uh, if you, I mean, all this immigrants group like Chinese, Philippines, Indians, and other, you know, majority of this uh, immigration, uh, you know, case pool. Uh, many of these people, the countries that we come from, we are not accustomed to paying money for talking. Uh, yeah. I, I bet I can tell you from India because I, I, I know this for firsthand is that if you ask a, a Indian applicant who is in India right now to go to any professional, whether it's accountant or lawyer or you know pretty much you know any anybody, and if they told you, look, uh, you got to pay certain fee for half an hour or one hour, and I will tell you something that you don't know, they will go yeah. to run away. They're going to bark at the idea and say, no, I'm not paying for nothing. And, yeah. but when I, when I saw you that you, you did that and I observed you from a distance and I, and I tried to, uh, uh, learn, uh, how this process works, uh, the way that you give them truthful, accurate knowledge. Yeah. Uh, something that they can hold on to, something they can understand, something they can feel valuable, the value yeah. for money for that for the thing. I think that latched on to my imagination quite early on, and I have not forgotten that lesson at all because of you. Today, yeah. most of my, uh, most I would say, 98% of my all my, uh, you know, my immigration practice is consultation, 
Yeah. And uh, but I, you know, I, I I try to deliver value to them. And yes. people who have people who have uh, wasted thousands and thousands of dollars, if not, uh, you know, their lives in on some wrong schemes and fraudulent yeah. things. You know, if I charge them some X number of dollars for for hourly fees, they don't mind it. And many people have told me this is the best advice they have got. The the yeah. ratio of the best versus the cheap cheap uh, uh, the the cheapness of the cost is is the highest. That means that uh, for this price they have ne never got this uh, solid stellar advice uh, ever yeah. in their whole lives. And you know it, it changes their life path. And this is all because I, of the formula that I learned from you. I, I picked up in part uh, my practice this way from a friend of mine who's a lawyer who told me once when he got into a jam in his legal profession on a case, he would look up who is the top lawyer in the country on that subject. Okay. He would phone that lawyer and say, I would like to buy one hour of your time. I'll pay you the one hour for you to help me with the case. And he would retain the man and pay, let's say, 500 yeah. sometimes $750 for one hour's worth of consultation with the lawyer. And he said, that's, it was priceless. The, you know, that <laughs> the lawyer would solve all these yeah. naughty little problems he was dealing with. And so he carried that on. And, uh, you know, when he shared that with me, I, I picked up on yeah. that. But I'll just, I will say one thing about that. Uh, I particularly now like clients who approach me by email and say, I have, a, let's say, a spousal case and, you know, I want to come to Canada or whatever. Because in those instances, I will send them some sort of a, a, a beginning, perhaps an article or some, you know, um, some outline of some of the beginning phases of doing a spousal case. Like a, like a pre-assessment. Like pre yeah. yeah. So... I, I send them that with a form to set up a consultation so they don't feel that I'm just, oh, well, give me your money and then I'll talk to you. Uh, I, I try to give them some little benefit up front, valuable benefit, yeah. Yeah. so that they see I'm not just about, you know, taking your money, but that you will, you will indeed get benefit from the consultation. And if I don't give benefit, sometimes I'll tell them if I, there have been cases, there are sometimes cases where the client, uh, we just misconnected. I thought he had a spousal case and he has some sort of a, shall we say, criminal case or something. And I'm yeah. clearly not the right guy for him. Yeah. I'll, just, I'll just say, uh, this didn't work. I'm not going to charge anything for this, uh, you know, for this consultation. Uh, yeah. You know, occasionally you have to do that. You know, sometimes that's the yeah. way it goes. Yeah. That's that's uh, that's that's wonderful. That's wonderful. And in my case, actually, yeah. because uh, I have done uh, countless. I mean, I I don't even have a count of how many uh, uh, spouse app spouse based applications I've done, and I have a, like a uh, you know uh, you know list of uh, compilation compilation of you know like uh, uh, success stories on on YouTube channel, and people can see yeah. them. You know they can understand if the circumstances they probably mirror their own circumstances and can see if this uh, thing worked in their case maybe it will work in my case so let's talk and yeah. that's how it goes but uh, you know uh, at the at the end of the day uh, it's all about uh, uh, in in immigration and uh, immigration law there's a word that we use all the time is called humanitarian and compassionate application which is section yeah. 25 airport application uh, 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 immigration will uh, sometimes, based on HNC factors and best interests of child, they will approve an application for PR based on certain uh, compassion they can see in the background. Maybe somebody's ill, or you know, who knows. Uh, yeah. In our law practice, if if we don't don't have humanitarian intent and compassion in our heart, that immigration law practice will not flourish for long long time. Yeah. It it will it it will it will atrophy. It will go out and it will it will not be yeah. something. So, uh, yeah. so that's 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 the reality. But hey, I just wanted to uh, uh, based on the based on the milestone of the hundred thousand uh, on YouTube. Many people sometimes ask me. Clients ask me, 
what did I do? And they, they tell me they want to become immigration lawyers or consultant. I say, look, yeah. uh, uh, one day I'm going, to, I'm going to let you see the guy who made me on this path and maybe you can get inspiration <laughs> from him. Uh, so today is the day. Uh, so I just wanted to thank you from my heart and, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's just. Uh, I'm so happy for you, Amarjad. You're, you're a hero for me. I, uh, you know, as much as you may uh, like and respect me, it's, it's mutual. I'm, I'm so happy to be, you know, to have come into your life and you came into mine. Uh, it makes, uh, it's, I, I know you're on my radar screen out there. I know that, you know, indeed, and in some instances, I think I should call Amar Jadabosis and figure this out with him. He knows this area, you know. And uh, and it's, it's a great joy to have someone, a friend like you is, uh, you know, a great joy in life. So, I, you I, know, I, uh, we can do this more than one. We, you know, this is one time when we met together. We'll have another time, uh, you know, where we can get together and uh, can, talk more. I, I, I love to, I love to discuss. Oh, and cases I, you know, sure. sometimes when I go, don't go to sleep and, you know, I, I read cases on Canley and, and federal uh, site and uh, look at cases, uh, uh, immigration appeal cases, even judicial review cases all the time. And uh, I have two children, many people know, and they always uh, tell me, Dad, you have nothing to do. You are such a boring. You always <laughs> read immigration. Come on. Can we not yeah. talk about immigration today? You know, yeah, yeah. Let, us, let us have dinner. I said, no, no, no. I know a case that is called best interest of child. This is the case yeah. which is really applicable here. Or something else. Or sometimes, you know, when I see certain, uh, when I see a movie or something, when I see uh, like a, a situation where people are getting married and I, and I, my immigration filters are always on. I'm saying, look, this marriage will not, not pass the immigration test. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I, I always have an immigration angle to every everything. And in, in Edmonton, where you know Edmonton, you have been running away from Edmonton a long time. When yeah. I go to, when I go to grocery shopping and, you know, many times when I go to Walmart or Costco, I meet somebody and say, hey, I know you. I know you. You were the guy on yeah. the YouTube, you know. Hey, by the <laughs> way, would you, would you would you mind telling me, you know, my application is pending? Do you know how yeah, long yeah. does it take? And I say, look, I don't know. <laughs> so <laughs> so it's just, you know, I'm just I'm just consumed. I'm just consumed. Uh, there's, there's no other word. I'm just consumed by immigration. You're, you're fortunate. Oh. You're fortunate to have found, uh, you know, your your passion. Uh, yeah. not many people have that so yeah. okay so uh i really appreciate the honor honor and the opportunity to get, you know link up with you again and uh, i wish you all the best in your career and in your life um, sure. Thank keep you. in touch with me and i will with you one one more one more time as a as a teacher as a, as a person who is a great uh, people talk about who's a great social media influencer today you know I think your influence uh, on on my professional career is beyond any uh, any measure. I mean, it's it's just I I, I cannot even uh, if there was any way I can you know repay this debt back to you. There was no no way that I even could not even fathom to do it. So your uh, it's like a god. Well, the, the repayment uh, is uh, the 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 phrase I was looking for is let virtue be its own reward is the phrase that I was searching for earlier in our conversation, but in your case your success is the repayment. I don't need any other repayment. You know, you being who you are is enough of a repayment for me. I value you and your success, and I you know I I hope you continue on with what you're doing. A hundred thousand people following you, Amarjot. That's amazing. And these, these are, by the way, immigration, immigration dedicated uh, people, like people who are searching for immigration now. They are not just like chit chat or you know just following a dance or movie or something. They they are they are searching for immigration and they are comparing. They are in the, they are in the immigration uh, in the in the market. I mean, they are yeah. they are the they are pre qualified people for just you know following immigration. Thing yeah. and, and they follow uh, this. Uh, but by the way, you know, uh, I, I know, I know you have been, uh, 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 you know, a, a mentor of, for me. You know, and I sometimes thinking what will happen. You know, once I am done with this profession, and you know, I, you know, I, my daughter, I have two daughters, and, and my daughter is going to college, uh, and you know, 
And I, I just wanted to give you a little, a little comparison. You'll find it a little funny. And I tell my daughter, look, hey, why not you become a lawyer? Why not say, say Dad, this is the most boring thing I ever... What is the <laughs> And they don't understand. So, you know, the, the, the fact is that, you know, sometimes people are born uh, and they are predestined to do a certain thing. I mean, I cannot I so. make somebody an immigration lawyer, immigration consultant, just by teaching him and feeding him books and no. giving him precedence and something. You just cannot program that person to become uh, uh, yeah. somebody that you think that they, they will become. It just comes by, I don't know, it's a God-given or nature-given or something. It, you yeah. are just programmed to do a certain thing. And yeah. I and I can tell you this uh, briefly. When you went to Toronto, I I worked uh, for Catholic Social Service and Mennonite Center for oh, yes, some time. Yeah. And even even though that work is good, I'm talking to immigrants and something. But even in that forum, many people knew that I had an immigration background. And whenever they had some kind of immigration law uh, problem discussed, you know, all the problems were gravitating towards me. And yeah. I and I and I knew sooner or later I need to. I need to do full time what I need to do, you know, like immigration yeah. or practice, not. Yeah. And and with your with your inspiration, there's one thing before I before I let you. I know we're getting late. Yeah. Here. Uh, one thing that you always told me, uh, which is always, uh, you know, I I know in 2008 or nine, uh, I I mentioned casually to you that you know, uh, should I go to uh, uh, you know law school or should I go to some other you know just to just to uh, yeah. get this. And, and I and I kept on postponing, hey, look, I'm already 40 at that time, and you know, why go to law school yeah. or something? And he said, look, Amarjad, you will you will go to that age, whether you have the degree or not, does not matter. Yeah. So you will age nonetheless. Anyway, you better go and do yeah. something. And, yeah. you know, yeah. I, I still I still remember the fact. And sometimes when people say, look, they are too senior now, they can't do that. I always remember what you said, look, whether you do, do some education or not, you will age out anyway. Yeah. So better do That's something true. with it. And yeah. I always, yeah. and I always remember, and I, and I think, I think that was. I'm a so happy price. you got you you. There was a moment where you were reflecting on whether you would become a registered consultant, you know, right. Right. Uh, certified consultant, and right. I encouraged you to, and you did, and I'm I'm really happy you did, because just, otherwise you wouldn't have had the ability to do what you're doing. That's today. right. That's right. It's just giving yeah. more. And, and by the way, uh, if I may remind you, unless you've forgotten, you also wrote a recommendation letter to the college or somewhere regarding yeah. regarding some experience. They were looking to find out. And I think that's one of the clause was that, what, do you have any experience uh, doing this? And I said, yeah. yes, I have some experience. And I think you wrote a, yeah. uh, 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 like a glowing uh, you know letter about and in your in your uh, golden seal on it. I still have it somewhere. <laughs> Some, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, with yeah, a, like yeah. a, either like a tinted uh, letter pad. So I still remember that. And, you know, I'm, I'm really, really grateful that uh, this all happened uh, because of, I don't know what, because of who, but. So uh, now I, you can be a mentor. It's your turn to be a mentor as well. For your daughters, maybe not in immigration. Maybe somebody else. somewhere else. else. Yeah, but maybe someone else, you know, yeah. that'll come. So this goes, this goes generation to generation. It will pass on to of somebody course. else. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Let's meet again sometime. And right. uh, uh, thank you so much for having me on your program. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, guys, okay. uh, people who are watching the show, I just wanted to bring him uh, on the on the show so that you can see uh, who's that person who uh, got me started on this. Many people ask me, how did I learn immigration? What do I do? You know, how did you get you? So I said, no, no, hold on. Maybe I'll get you the right person who will throw light on who's get got me started. And so here's Andy Semochek. <laughs> and uh, people who do not know, just go and type Andy Semochek, M S E M O T I uk on google and you will see his website myworkvisa.com uh and uh or andy samuchuk on forbes in many articles uh he's in toronto uh people who are in toronto area especially if you have some kind of uh, complex immigration especially like maybe jr or you know any appeal or anything that you want to discuss andy samuchuk is the person that i will refer i've referred many people uh you know without even a second thought so gta area Thank you. toronto area that's where he is Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. Goodbye. Take care. Take care, Amarjan. All the best to you. Thanks.